Now, as we will all know that the discussion today is, uh, is part of the Centenary Bank's Thought Leadership Forum program aimed at reaffirming the brand's contribution and experience. In this case, of course, we're looking at uh, real estate, but they've done quite a lot of other uh, things. And the purpose of this uh, session and forum is to share ideas, knowledge, and experiences, as well as discuss and contribute to a deeper understanding of uh, the issue at hand, which is real estate financing in the new normal. And uh, of course, to all of you joining us from wherever you're joining us, Karibuni Sana, welcome. Those of you that are outside Africa, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Those of you that are in Uganda, thank you for being a part of this discussion. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, get to first engage with our host today, Centenary Bank, a bank not just big in stature, but big at heart in serving the Ugandans. Mr. Abdul Chanika. Uh, first and foremost, if you can, if I can allow you now, make your introductory remarks towards the subject today, please uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Edwin, and thanks for this opportunity uh, for us to share as Centenary Bank with our family uh, of, of our clients and Ugandan that large, our products for uh, housing. Uh, you ably highlighted the shortage of housing in this country is quite huge. And as Centenary Bank, we feel like the people who are looking at the clients at the lower end of the pyramid, we need to be uh, leading in providing financing for this sector. Our Centenary Bank is a microfinance bank. So we look so much to the low end customers uh, to provide them with solutions. At first, we thought we could do uh, mainly uh, business. Centenary joined and thought that the main important thing is to give people money to inject in the business and increase their income, then get them out of poverty. But along the way, we realized that uh, uh, housing is a serious problem in this country. Uh, uh, if you allow me to do some quick, quick look through my slides, uh, I know it's not going to be a presentation but a quick look through my slides. Please. Uh, uh, I hope you can see, can you see my slides? On my side, not yet. All right. Uh, there was, I need somebody to help me to share my, my screen. I'll share my screen later. But just to go through quickly, we know housing uh, is a major, is, is, is a very important sector because housing is basic. We know that everyone needs a house, poor or rich. And you, we know that housing contributes a lot to, uh, to, to the economy of this country. We do 12% of the economy of this country comes from housing. Uh, it, it enhances uh, income directly. Uh, we know very well so many people are employed in the housing sector, some people directly, others indirectly. We know the construction companies, many construction companies, uh, like you, when you look at roofings, you look at hardware world, you look at the cement industries, these are all uh, uh, benefiting from the housing sector. So it, it lifts people out of poverty. But also it's a source of investment at so many people, uh, like people who are investing in the real estate, buying mortgage, uh, buying houses, renting houses. So it's a source of investment. And, and uh, those who buy plots can tell that every time you buy a plot, when you want to sell it, it is selling highly. And it's also a multiplier effect. When you go to banks, most banks, they will request for collateral. And most of it, this is land. Eh? Land is the main collateral. Mm? So if you want to access funds, eh, uh, you need to look at, uh, at, at land. So land quite opens up uh, uh, the sector for, for investment. People can access money uh, uh, to invest <coughs> in business, in hospitals. So that's why housing is a key sector, which we feel like we cannot avoid. 
Uh, let me, uh, um, uh, as, at the moment, I'm sharing with you how the market looks like. If you can look at the market, uh, most of the people uh, in the world, like you said, are staying in, in, in poor areas. 70% of our people are building their house incrementally. Why do I share with you these slides? Just to know, how does the market look like? You find that in the markets, most people, most financial institutions are giving mortgages but mortgages take care of just very few people in the community. Like you see, uh, it's only two to 10%. So that's why as Centenary Bank, we, apart from mortgages, we developed the micro housing products as we see, uh, as we go along. As you can see, Edwin, most of our people, 60% of our people, and in such areas, if you go to Katanga, if you go to Mulago, uh, this is where most people are. And you have seen that most of the talent is in these areas, as you've seen the ghetto producing so many big people in this country, politicians, businessmen. So you find 60% of our people in urban areas are staying in slums. So we need to do a lot. We need to change the situation. Even the people who rent, they need good houses to rent. And if we talk about housing, for us, we think about housing as someone, people should have fast land, and should have ownership of land, those who need to construct. Uh, a house, there must be social services like hospitals, like schools, like what? Water, you know? And they must be affordable. Some of these housing uh, provided is not affordable, as you can see. They are in a high range and most of our people cannot afford. They should be habitable, located in good areas and addressing the needs of our people the way they want it to be. You ably uh, talked about this and the housing deficit is real. Like you said, uh, we have a deficit of 1.6 uh, million housing units. You, you said 2.4, I think this is, you, you are talking about what's happening right now. But the very important thing, uh, Edwin, to talk about and, and other people who are following us is what type of houses are we talking about? Are we talking about houses in Muyenga? Are we talking about houses in rural areas? Most of our people are in rural areas. So we should know exactly, but according to statistics, most of our people, like 50%, stay in one bedroom the houses. And then around 30% stay uh, in two bedroom houses. So as, as we think about solving the housing problems, we should know the kind, the size of houses which are required, then we are, can ably design these houses in construction materials using technology to make them as cheap as possible for people to join uh, to, 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 to be able to, to access this housing. So uh, we you will able to talk about government. I don't want to talk about government right now. Mm -hmm. But I, I will able to, I, I will talk to uh, about the, the challenges in construction, which we need to be addressed. And as Centenary, we are trying to address. First, ownership of land uh, is a tedious process here to get titles. That's why only 20% of our land is, is titled. And this brings problems in people to access land and land conflicts. We have seen a lot of land conflicts. People are being expelled from land. Those are big challenges. Acceptable collateral because of lack of titles. Uh, construction materials, they are quite very expensive. And this is, makes construction very expensive. If you look at the bag of cement, iron sheets, they are quite very expensive. So that makes construction very expensive. Uh, the, the, the people, the, the mansions, the builders, you may think these are very small things, but this influence the quality of housing we have. And the people fail sometimes to put up houses because of such challenges. So. Uh, those are the challenges we have and we are trying to address. And if we are to take housing to another level, we need to solve those problems. So Centenary Bank, as, as, the, uh, as the topic today, in the new normal, how can we provide our services? Let me take, take the listeners to this, that we have now the widest branch network. So wherever our clients are, we can reach them. We have 74 branches. We have 181 ATMs and also we are connected to other ATMs of other banks. We have the largest number of agents. And we also, we are on phone. We are digital. We can, you can transact us on phone, <laughs> visa banking, 
Why do I mention this? It tells you that all our services, including the housing loans, are able, you are able to get them wherever you are using our channels. We have the largest client base as far as we're concerned in Uganda. We bank a quarter population of Ugandans. And uh, uh, we have also a big staff. Uh, uh, and we are planning to open more branches so we can reach our clients wherever they are, irrespective of whether it's near the branch. I told you about the agents, but also you can use the phones. And by having these people can bank wherever they are. They can deposit money. They can withdraw money. They can borrow. We have even uh, loans on funds. Uh, and, and also we found out that most uh, 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 banks are doing uh, uh, banking uh, uh, in mortgages. And unfortunately, as we have shared before, mortgages are for the few clients. And that's why we, we decided to go lower and we, we went for the micro housing. We developed a home improvement loan in 2007 after realizing that most of our clients are diverting money in business into housing. So we developed a, a, a home improvement loan. I'll go, I'll go in detail about the products we have later, but we want to be brief because this is not supposed to be a presentation, but I'm just trying to go through. So in 2011, uh, Edwin, we tried to develop a mortgage. We realized that people needed more money and the home improvement was a shorter period and the amount was little. But to our surprise, we found that most clients could not get the mortgage because the requirements were big. People needed land titles. We need to be or choose bills of quantities. So our clients whom we are targeting, which Centenary is targeting, we are not being served. So we decided to develop another product to, uh, to cater for such clients. So like I said before, we realize most people are building their houses incrementally. And uh, we, 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 we partnered with Habitat for Humanity and we said, let's develop a product for incremental construction to allow people, whatever money they have, they can put up a house where they can stay, either two bedroom house, so that they can stay in that house. And then they go on completing the house grow, uh, slowly, as you can see, because most Ugandans are building incrementally. So that's why we partnered for Habitat for Humanity and we developed the center home loan product. As you can see on my, on my screen, you can see how Ugandans are building their houses. Like you see the house on the right of the screen, someone has just put up two bedroom house and he can stay there and he's in that house. So we developed a product which can simulate exactly what they are doing. It allows them to get little amount of money and they put up a house where at a habitable level and using what they have, we accept whatever they have. Some people are using the banjas, even some people are using chattels to borrow these small loans and put up their houses in an incremental way. We have the housing products uh, along the whole value chain as I will share with you. Uh, we start with the center land loan product. This is mainly for land acquisition. Today, I saw something being shared on Facebook. This product is for people to acquire land and also process land titles. The other product we have is the center home loan product. That is basically what I was talking about, is building houses in an incremental way. We can give clients up to 30 million and we can, they can pay within up to five years. But it allows the people to borrow a little amount of money and they build their houses in an incremental way up to completion. We have the home improvement, uh, like I shared in the slide before, most people are living in substandard houses or uh, they are not repaired. So we, we, we also have the home improvement loan, mainly for renovation, utility, uh, paying water bills and everything, uh, uh, even personal, personal problems, personal expenses, that product can take care of that. The other one I talked about is the mortgage up to 300 million. That is takes care of the high classes, but also we can go beyond 300 million because we have SME loans. We also take care of renewable energy because we think that building houses without thinking about the environment is very, is very, is not sustainable. So we have the center solar loan product, which allow our clients to buy solar systems, 
renewable energy installed in their businesses and their homes so that they can use clean energy. We are also managing the power connection loan for electricity installation at only 15%. So the requirements are, 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 are easy to get. You can go read on our website. I will not talk more about that. And our processes are quite very simple. Uh, we can always, people can access up to 30 million, like for example, uh, for the, the center home loan, you don't need a valuation report. We can give you up to 30 million without a valuation report. Eh? Uh, and up to 15 million, we, you don't need to mortgage. So our loans are very flexible for people to get. Mr. Abdul? Uh, Edwin, Mr. I'm Abdul. just... Yes. You, yeah. If you can uh, wrap up in the next one or two minutes, so that exactly. we can, because some of the questions I'll be asking you, uh, you're already touching on them. Yet, uh, exactly. So if you can wrap up. Uh, this okay. is my last slide, Edwin. Please. Now we can't do this alone. We know this is a big task. What I we talk about is a big task, and no one can do this alone. So we are working together with different partners, like Uganda Land Board. We worked with them in land title processing. Some people learn, you, you hear about the Kwate Chapa. We are part of the banks which started the, the land title processing financing. <coughs> uh, we, we are partnering with Habitat for Humanity International. You heard about the center home for incremental construction. We are partnering with real estate companies. Like today we have Universal Mad Puppet Enterprise. They are part of the companies we are partnering with for land acquisition. Uh, because we know this is really a big task and some of these partners help us in delivering services which we cannot deliver as the bank. We are also in real energy. We are working with the government and uh, the, the, the government institutions like Urea, U, Triple C, and also we have solar companies to help us install renewable energy. And we are going to partner with other big pe people in the, in, in the renewable energy sector like Uganda Solar Energy Association, and Uganda National Alliance for Clean Cooking. So briefly, uh, I've just gone uh, quickly through it. That is what we offer at Centenary Bank. Uh, let me allow people to come in with any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, to all, uh, to, to our panelists, I always love to, uh, to moderate uh, sessions that are indeed uh, uh, filled with good content and substance, but also uh, the time, but uh, Mr. Chani Abdul, thank you very much for that uh, expressive uh, uh, presentation and introductory remarks on what Centenary Bank is, is, is about. To all of you, our participants, wherever you are, please feel free to share your questions with us that you'd want the panelists to be able to address. Remember, our focus today is on uh, real estate financing in the new normal. Is Mr. Simo Gerere with us now? Mr. Moses Simo Gerere, are you with us now? Yes, thank you, Edwin. I'm with you. Live Mr. Moses, here. Yes, Mr. Moses Simogere, in the interest of time, I'm requesting the panelists to make introductory remarks within, if you can use five minutes, because some of the things you're going to share will be the, some of the questions that people need to ask you. So please go ahead, Mr. Moses, and it's a pleasure meeting you. E. Thank you so much, Ibn. Uh, I'm really humbled to be in this conversation this morning. And yes, like, my colleague Abdul is already pointed out, we are partners with Centenary Bank as Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity is ideally a non-profit housing organization that has a mission of actually availing a decent place for everyone to live in worldwide. So that's what we stand for. And we have gone ahead to put in place some strategies that actually can lead us into actually availing and making accessible decent places for everyone to live. So ideally that is it. And uh, we, we, we have two basic approaches to that. And that's vulnerable group housing, which ideally is donating to communities that cannot really put up homes for their families. And these are usually the orphans, the widows and the widowers. So that, 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 of course, is a program which may not be quite sustainable over a long time because it is dependent on donors who come in to support us and we avail housing to these communities. But our major focus seems now to be shifting to actually market development. 
working like partners like Centenary Bank, which have got a very strong footprint in the mass market to come up with appropriate housing products that can be able to support those low end uh, clients who cannot afford the big mortgages to be able to do their housing incrementally. So in brief, that's what I can say for now. Thank you so much, Edwin, and it's a pleasure to be on this conversation. Thank you very much to all of you that have just joined us. Edwin Masime is my name, your moderator today, uh, CEO of Chris Group and uh, the gentleman behind the Property Shop Franchises Africa. So as you would know, I'm very passionate about this particular uh, industry. Now, before I get to Mr. Mufadal, I think uh, uh, Mr. Mo, uh, Mr. Simogiri mentioned something very vital. Just a week ago, I was presiding over and hosting the Sustainable Housing and Sustainable Cities Conference. Now, whereas we're looking at real estate financing in the new normal, that is a word that I would want our panelists to keep at the back of their minds, that uh, we are not looking at real estate financing, whereas it's in the new normal, but we're looking at sustainability because after COVID, we're still going to be here and we're still going to be having the same challenges. So. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a pleasure to have you here. And uh, next, of course, is a, a friend of mine who the first time I met him and he introduced his vision for Uganda. And as far as affordable housing is concerned, my ears were tickled greatly. And since then, we've worked together, built a solid, strong relationship. And I'm, I'm really proud of the work that they're doing. Mr. Mufadal, you have uh, five minutes to introduce yourself to us and what universal uh, affordable, what multi uh, universal multi-purpose is doing in Uganda at the moment. Samufada. Hello. Hello, Edwin. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Centenary Bank. Uh, and an excellent presentation by Abdul. It was quite detailed, explained very nicely. My name is Mufaddal. Mufaddal Yolawala. I, I am uh, representing Universal M Enterprises. We are affordable housing. We have completed more than 2,000 units in Uganda, in uh, places like Nalia, Najera, Muyenga, Kololo. And uh, <clears throat> we are doing 1,000 houses right now. And uh, as Edwin has said, we have been a uh, close and old friend uh, for almost like five, six years now. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a journey, definitely. I've, we have seen each other grow. And Centenary Bank has been a very vital role, played a very vital role in real estate. In, um, I, according to the information which I have, Centenary Bank has got the biggest base, database of clientele in the country. And uh, the kind of awareness they are creating for real estate is, is quite remarkable. Uh, for affordable housing with Universal, I'm just sharing, I'm just sharing a, a presentation of mine on the group. Uh, it is loading. It, uh, it, it shows what is happening with uh, Universal and what is happening with affordable housing and what Edwin had just uh, pointed out to us, sustainability. And how are we trying to make presentations, uh, make uh, houses more sustainable for the local Ugandans? If you see the presentation, in that, uh, in Universal, we try and offer a one-stop shop. That means clientele, whoever comes, they can get a one-bedroom, two-bedroom, three-bedroom units in different projects, in different locations. So in short, we try and give a menu to the clientele to choose from, which Centenary Bank, again, uh, gives them loan and uh, provides housing for them. What is the meaning of the word sustainability? According to what I understand, sustainability is that you have to use the minimum resources, uh, try and use as much of uh, natural light and ventilation, biodigester, gazebos, all these things we are trying to, we are trying to, we have, we have been using in our, in our, in our projects and have, have constantly tried innovate we are the pioneers in introducing uh, rooftop jogging tracks in uh, swimming pools. And some of these ideas have always been exchanged with, uh, you can say with Edwin, with Centenary Bank, 
and always open for new ideas. You have our website, www.affordablehousing.ug. You guys can go and comment over there, give us information, new ideas. We are trying to choose new ideas where if anybody gives us a good idea, we are going to reward them just from an open mindset perspective. We have, uh, Abdul had also mentioned a very important point, which was cost of construction. For reducing the cost of construction, we are, doing, we are trying to do backward integration. What I mean by backward integration is having everything in-house. We are doing concrete in-house. We are doing uh, products in-house. We are doing every, the, the drawers, everything, trying to make it in-house so that we can give our clientele a product at an affordable price. And uh, now to you, Edwin. Any questions? All right, thank you so much. I'll be getting back to you again shortly. Now, so far, those of you that are joining us on the different platforms across Uganda and across the world, uh, we will realize that as we discuss uh, real estate financing in the new normal, uh, some of the key factors so far that have come out from uh, the, the, our panelists today, we will now realize that uh, number one, we are talking about low income capacity. Number two, we are talking about challenges in access to credit. Number three, we are talking about the land tenure system. Uh, number four, we are talking about the high cost of building. Number five, we have the low employment capacity of the economy. And uh, finally, I'll have the panelists address, uh, make their comments on the role of the national housing policy. So, so far from the presentations of our three panelists, I've been able to deduce those particular key points. Now, I will quickly, first and foremost, get, and please, if you're just, if you're a participant and a delegate in this uh, forum today, feel free to quickly send in your questions. You, if there are particular questions to a particular panelist, let us know and we'll make sure those questions get through. Uh, Mr. Abdul, from uh, Centenary Bank, you gave a very greatly insightful presentation that helped us a lot. Now, we all know that for most Ugandans, given the background of the performance of our economy and the income set up of Womuntu, Wawansi, and uh, the low income earners, we ca they cannot go to the money lenders because we have the issues of lending at a rate above the legal rate and these guys operate in a free economy. At the end of the day, we all have to come to Centenary Bank. My question to you, Mr. Chanik Abdul Sibambi, I am glad to know that you have such a huge coverage, 74 branches, 181 ATMs across the world. You are holding accounts of close to one, about 1.9 million Ugandans. What are you doing vis-a-vis -vis the challenges we have what is Centenary Bank doing to ensure that these challenges are eliminated, reduced, so that access to housing can be a reality and not just a myth? Please, Mr. Abdul. Uh, thank, thank you, Edwin, uh, for that question. First, what we are doing uh, is developing appropriate products, like I, I, I shared with you, because you know that in most uh, in this country, getting a land title is is not something easy. Most of our people can 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 tell you this, but we are starting. We, we, we are partnering like with Uganda Land Board with government to see that people can get land titles because we, without proper land tenure, people cannot develop land because you have seen. How many people have been displaced from their from their houses? You saw recently what happened in Kampala when people's houses were broken down. It really hurts. But where is the major problem? Is land ownership. So having a product like the central land loan is helping so many people to strengthen their land tenure system. And we take them where they are. If they have a chibanya, they come to us with whatever they have. We accept that collateral they have but help them to develop that collateral. So the products are very key. Like I talked about the center home loan of the incremental construction. 
people building slowly according to what they have, getting some small amount of money and put a two bedroom house where they can now go on to expand to the house of their dream. Uh, and also we, we, the, the partnerships we have, as, as, as I shared with you, the partnerships are helping us a lot. Like the land, people buying land. We have people like Bakaima, people like Sema properties, Canaan sites, and you know these people are in the market. You know, we have Zion because people even to acquire land when they have money is a big problem in this country. So we, we are looking for such partnership to help them acquire land. The, 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 now like Universal, who are, who are just on board today, you can get a one bedroom house in Kampala, uh, which is not possible if you go out to your money to buy land and then start construction, you may need more than 100 million to get a house in Kampala. But with Universal on board, you can see that you can get a house in Kampala. Most people are renting in Kampala. I don't know whether Edwin, you have your own house, but some people are renting in Kampala. So we just tell them, why don't you get an apartment, your own apartment with a land title on it, the money you are using to rent, own an apartment. So save on that money and own an apartment, which is acceptable in Ugandan law. A condominium is now acceptable. It has a land title, which is acceptable in banks. So as Centenary, what are we doing? We are creating awareness, like you see us now, trying to create awareness, tell people what Centenary is offering. So with the right products and the right outreach, like you've seen, we are able to reach our clients wherever they are with the right products and the right people and policies. So that are the thing you, we are doing as Centenary. You talked about what's the role of national housing policy. I don't know whether I should tackle it here. No, or no, you are waiting. no, 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 not yet, not yet. Okay, I needed please. you to first address so what Centenary Bank is doing. Well, I'll get to you on that, that is, national housing policy. Exactly. So okay, that is so. what we are doing. And these products I've mentioned are everywhere in all our branches, the 74 branches. Even our city agents can be approached if someone wants to apply for a loan now. He can go to our center agents even right now and you apply for the loan. We receive your application. And that's what we said in the new normal. What are we doing? Allowing people to apply from everywhere they are according to the nearest center agent. Even you have loans on phones up to 5 million. So we are trying even under these circumstances of COVID where people cannot move to be able to serve them wherever they are. That is, Edwin, that's at the moment what I can Thank you. right now. Thank you very much. Now to all our panelists, I'm going to request for a very big favor. And I believe it is very possible. I am seeing that we have quite so many questions on my particular link on the property show here as well. I'm seeing so many questions coming in. I have a a huge batch of questions as well. And I know that the participants at the moment uh, have put their trust in this forum organized by Centenary about to be able to get answers, practical solutions towards the issue at hand today, real estate financing in the new normal. And then of course, later on the question of sustainability. So I will request for a favor that for every question that comes to you, let us only use two minutes at max or at most three minutes so that we can be able to cover uh, efficiently everything. I appreciate all new participants, both in Uganda and in the diaspora. I'm seeing quite a number of questions coming in from Dubai, Europe. So thank you very much. Uh, what we shall do right now, uh, after we take one, one last batch of questions with the panelists, we'll begin attending to the questions from the participants or delegates for that matter. Uh, right now, the next question will go to uh, Mr. Um, Simo Gedede. Uh, when you talk about the vulnerable group housing, you've done quite a lot of work with Centenary Bank. What would be the success stories you can share with us in terms of the impact of what you're doing? What is the extent of this impact? And probably later on, we'll engage with you on the sustainability question. But so far, what is the impact and how can it be replicable in this same COVID time for us to be able to enjoy the services that you're offering or the value that you're adding to the economy in, in as far as the housing sector is concerned. Please, Mo. Yeah, thank you so much, Edwin, for that uh, for comment and question. Well, uh, we have had quite a good journey with Centenary Bank and like their kind of mission fits into each other. 
and it fits the also directly into uh, Habitat's mission of creating a different place for every family in this uh, country. So the impact has been enormous because of the, you know, Centenary is a mass market bank and see a people's bank. You know, it goes down right there into the rural areas and people can be able to access. The product we worked with Centenary came from actually the people themselves we were able to go out and talk to the clients in the low end of the market and ask them, what can you afford? What do you have? What do you want to do? And when we were designing that center home product, we were very cognizant of the fact that all those attributes which were to be embedded into that product were actually the wishes of the people in as far as coming up with a, a, a people-oriented product. And I think the numbers speak for themselves. I think right now, as we speak, uh, Centenary has the largest portfolio across the country with clients you know, in the market who are accessing uh, their product lines in the lower end of the market. And the numbers, I think, as we speak now, it's over 8.6 million US dollars. I think, uh, Edwin, you can help me convert that into the Ugandan shillings, but that's quite a colossal amount of money which yeah. is being taken in that sector or that segment. That's what I can say for now. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Mr. Mofadal. When you ventured into Uganda, I know that we had conversations when you were just coming in, and I had my doubts, of course, as any human being would, but you went ahead and pursued your dream that seemed impossible. But the question is, what makes Universal stand out in the market space of affordability? And the key question is, how affordable are you to the Ugandans? How unique is, is Universal? What makes you stand out? But how affordable are you? Give us some numbers. Share with us some success stories in terms of your demographics and the people you've been able to put uh, roofs over their heads and how affordable are you for the general populace? Please, Mr. Mufada. Abdul, sorry, Abdul and uh, Edwin. Your question, first question was, how do we stand out? Um, we stand out because uh, Edwin, one of the points which I mentioned to you in my presentation was that uh, we provide a menu to the client. What do I mean by a menu is that if a client wants a one bedroom starting from 85 million Uganda shillings, they have with us. They want it in Nigeria, they have it with us. They want it in Nalia, they have it with us. They want it in uh, uh, Chireka, they have it. They want it in Kololo, they have it. They want it in Muyenga, they get it. Same with the two bedroom, three bedroom, and it do in all the three locations, three four locations we have. I think so. Right now, this menu, according to my knowledge, nobody is able to offer apart from us. And uh, what I mean is, what what I uh, another point which we have from stand out is that somebody in the middle, when not in this conversation, I read it somewhere that they mean that they want to start off with one project which I was totally, totally, it was like one project at a time. I was totally against it. Why? Because the kind of uh, backlog or the kind of deficit this affordable housing segment has, it is impossible for us to meet that kind of uh, uh, supply if one developer is doing one project at a time. It, it, for example, if there are like 200 developers, they are doing one project at a time. Now, if one project is 20 units, that is 2,000 units only. Now, when alone with Universal, we have completed more than 2,000 units. And 1,000 units are under construction. So what makes us stand out is that we try and give different products and try and make it on a mass level, on a... On a, on, a, on a number game where we give clientele a product which they need at their price. Second, your question was how affordable? Uh, affordable is a very dynamic uh, word, what I feel is that. And, uh, and we have been the pioneer with the help of Edwin Centenary Bank 
in creating awareness for this word because when we came in people didn't even know what is a condominium unit do you remember that time and yeah <laughs> so in 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 affordable what do i mean is that in tololo the word affordable means that a house at at least 250 million uganda shillings which we are offering in muyenga affordable means that a house at 172 million uganda shillings which we are offering in uh, in najera an affordable word means that a house at 85 million Uganda shillings, which we are providing. The same with Nalia, 115. Yes, what is please. the number for Kololo? 252, 252 million. Okay. The important point is that is that what anybody likes, for example, if I, I am a Mohindi, I like spicy. So I, I, I take more spices, right? Somebody likes Najera, he takes he takes Najera. Somebody likes Kololo. He like he takes it in Kololo. So whatever anybody wants, they get it in that particular taste, that variety. That is what we try and offer in the term affordable for that person's taste. I hope I'm I'm, I'm making any sense to you. Yes. Thank you. Now Thank you. let's begin uh, taking up the questions from the participants and delegates in this forum, and then I'll go back to the five key questions that uh, I deduced from your introductory presentation and remarks. The first question that came in from Dubai, hello team, is there provision for condominium financing, even for off-plan purchase? How do I take, how do I take a loan and pay in installments. Now, I think I'll first send this question to Centenary Bank, uh, first and foremost, and then I will see what uh, Mufadal side has to offer. Uh, so, Ms. Abdul, uh, the provision for condominium financing or of plan purchase, what, what, yeah, thank, what do you have for the people? Uh, thank, you, thank you, Edwin. Uh, we are already in partnership with Universal. What you need to do is just approach Universal and identify the apartment you want to buy. Normally, what you do when you reach there, they will give you an agreement or an offer. Uh, Sometimes they ask for down payment. Uh, he will tell you like around 5 million. Uh, but for salary earners, we tell them that we can even finance 100%. So just get your offer from 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 uh, from Mufadal and bring it to us, and then we start processing for you a loan where we start paying them as they continue to construct. And for you, you can occupy that house within six months and start paying us back slowly up to a period of ten years. So yes, you just get the agreement, we come to us, and we'll give you the product you want, either under mortgage or salary earners in case of salary earners. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now to all our viewers, participants, and those that have access to the audio platform on this forum, uh, the house rules are very simple. If you have a mobile phone with you, please keep it in silent or keep it totally off to avoid any distractions. So far, so good. And I think I'm enjoying this conversation. We are slightly more than halfway uh, the time that we have to all of you that are participating right now. If you have any question, you're a delegate, whether in Uganda or outside of Uganda, this should be the right time you send in your question because we have just less than an hour to close our forum today. And uh, our next question here is from Lilian Nakato. Hello, most of us have land titles small in size. Is it possible to build for us? And yes, at what cost? Uh, I think uh, I, 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 if I don't get this wrong, Lilian, I think the, the panelists that we have here Universal, uh, Mufadal, I don't think you have facility to build for people in terms of their land. Do you? Please clarify on this. Uh, Edwin, we have uh, recently started off a new company, which is called uh, Universal Skyline, in which we are trying to, trying to help the clientele who, are, who want something for their taste. So uh, they can definitely approach us that uh, company is uh, just being formed. It will take another couple of months, but what we are trying to ascertain in that is that we give clientele something of their taste in that line. So it is a possibility. 
Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That Thank is you. the way to go, Edwin. That is the way to Thank go. You. Whatever the Thank client you. is asking, he should be able to provide. Thank you. Now, this is a question from HL. I think HL, I don't know, would be an initial for either a name or a company. If I buy, I think this question is going to go both to uh, uh, Mr. Abdul and, uh, and Ms. Mufadal. Uh, but first to Centenary Bank. If I buy an off-plan condominium for 100 million, I need to get my calculator nearby as well. Uh, for 100 million, uh, how much will I have paid in total at the end of my payment plan if I'm being financed by the bank versus just paying the developer directly? What's the disparity between the two, uh, Mr. Abdul? I think you're going to have to come in here. Thank you, Edwin. I, I think I managed to, to, to answer that gentleman. Uh, I don't know how much is his contribution, but if we give you like a mortgage of a hundred million in Centenary Bank, uh, the interest is only 19% uh, 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 at a reducing principal balance. So you'll pay, we, we, I assume you'll pay that mortgage for 10 years, but whenever uh, you, you want, uh, uh, whenever, whenever you want to pay uh, in, uh, in earlier, we can allow you to pay uh, shorter. Sometimes people get a lot some money and they are able to clear uh, their what? They, 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 they are borrowing. But if you want to pay within 10 years, you will pay uh, 1,867,000. I think I put it in the chat. So that is if you borrow uh, 100 million, for 10 years because our mortgage is maximum is always 10 years. So that's what uh, he can pay in, he can multiply now by, 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 by around, uh, that's around by the month within 10 years, then he can get the total of how much he's really going to pay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Lillian is asking, can I offer land for you to build apartments you build with negotiate flows? You offer me some flows in exchange for money, Mr. Mufadel, is that possible? You said everything is possible, is this possible? <laughs> Uh, yes, it depends on the location of the land. And Madame Lillian has got so many questions. Huh? I, I think I need to go and meet her. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, if look at, uh, looking at the land location, and this is called a joint venture, where in, in case of land, uh, the developer is coming in and pitching in uh, some houses or some units where the both it's a win-win situation for both the developer does not need to invest now and uh, the the uh, the the, or the land uh, the land person does not have the money to build, so he she he or she gets uh, units in return, and <clears throat> the developer does sales of the rest of the product, and they both make money. Thank you, uh, Moses. Uh, Centenary Bank gave us a very uh, clearly. Uh, expressive and detailed presentation on uh, their reach in as far as the country Uganda is concerned. And in the slide, we ably saw the slums, the ghettos that we still have in Uganda and in Kampala, including the CBD. The question to you, Moses, is so far in your strategic plan, how do you intend, what is your role in ensuring that the slums are reduced in number and people have access. I noticed somewhere you mentioned that access to decent housing is a human right. If okay. it is a human right, what is Habitat doing to ensure that as more people as possible, especially Omuntua Wansi, can be able to also access housing, both in this COVID era and also sustainably moving forward. Moses. Thank you so much, Edwin. That's a, a really a tall order question. And of course, when you go down to the ghettos, you must be really prepared, you know, to, to, to battle it out. But anyway, let me put this right and on record that Habitat for Humanity's approach is ideally to try and facilitate uh, the market. And uh, in this aspect, we are going actually forward with uh, engaging in terms of uh, 
key players along the housing value chains, the policy <coughs> And we, we, we have different fronts now. We have the advocacy trying to explain that, you know, housing is a human right issue and it's not a privilege. And therefore everyone deserves a decent place where they can live with their families. So on that front, we are taking up uh, the responsibility of creating awareness through our various uh, strategies, engaging partners and going out to reach like-minded institutions so that we put together our efforts to increase the awareness. But above that, we thought it's important actually to, to, to create uh, linkages within the market, especially with the people who have got the money, the likes of Centenary, who have got tons and tons of money and they can be able actually to lend without uh, getting in financial problems because we very well know that you know lending into housings ideal long term and money gets stuck there uh, a lot longer than uh, other product propositions. So we are facilitating many more players in the market to embrace micro house. And we think when we do this effectively and we have so many players who are effectively uh, products that are to the lower end of the market, then people can go and actually negotiate and be able to access these products and go back home and do their home, their home improvements and they purchase land like uh, our colleague Abdul is telling us of the center, center land products. So our role idea is to facilitate the market in terms of product development, because we know very well many of the financial institutions in this country don't have elaborate uh, housing microfinance products for the lower end. We are saying, let's take them through our rigorous process of developing these products so that they are able to have these products on their menus and people can walk in and be able to access. And when we get so many players in the market, then of course, other players will join in and we can even see a reduction in the cost of housing. Because once the supply is good enough and the demand is there, then definitely where those two meet, there is always an optimal kind of uh, position where the suppliers are comfortable to continue supplying the solutions and also uh, on the demand side, the customers can continue accessing. And that way, that kind of approach makes it more sustainable than just, you know, handing out houses and also, you know, looking at other uh, approaches that may not be sustainable. Thank you. Ed. Thank you so much, Moses. I like the word you ended with, sustainable. Sustainability word and concept comes back. Mr. Mufada, uh, you, I know that you attempted and hinted on the idea and ideal of sustainable but I need you to throw more light on what your understanding of sustainable real estate development is, because we are going to strongly need this. Centenary Bank as a brand investing so much in ensuring Ugandan access uh, housing. This housing doesn't have to be just any housing, whether it's in the ghetto, Kololo, or Fort Porto, Mbarara, wherever it is, it's going to be sustainable. But we want to pick a leaf from you. What's your perspective of sustainable real estate development? Uh, Edwin, uh, as I mentioned earlier, sustainability is uh, uh, what I understand is that the disturbing Mother Earth as little as possible. Okay, so for example, we try the, the process of construction. It starts off even from the process of planning that how are you going to build those houses? What products are you going to use in constructing? It is yes, it is cement, concrete, steel. The things are the same, but how can you reduce those so that you are putting less load on this mother earth? And, and it becomes more environment friendly. You have like huge cross ventilation windows, which does not block air or it allows, it allows fresh air to come into the house and it does not allow in increase of the temperature of that area because you know places cities and places like uh, new york 
Bombay, their temperatures have increased because of the concrete jungle they've developed. So we don't want that to happen in Uganda. How do we avoid that is, is, is using some of these methods, which I'm telling by reducing the use of uh, steel, concrete, how these engineers try and help us. If you tell them, if you give them time to think how to do it, they will definitely try and help and get us done. Uh, and design something for you, which is, which is less in weight, in turn, reducing the price, which can be even more affordable, but also making it more sustainable. Things like uh, rainwater harvesting, biodigester, you see, gazebos, <coughs> gym, health club, swimming pools, all these, all these make part of uh, sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mufada. Now, back to you, Mr. Chanika Abdul. Centenary Bank, I have noticed greatly that uh, we are talking about financing in the new normal. Yes. And the hugest question, uh, I'll first of all switch to Mr. Chanika now, Mr. Chanika Abdul, uh, that when we're talking about uh, real estate financing, again, yes. both the low income ana, the Montua 1C, the middle income ana, we'll start with Centenary Bank. The question of collateral, collateral. How best are you helping this huge audience that you're reaching across the nation? How, able, how, do, how are you able to help people, especially when it comes to the issues? Because the low income earners that we're talking about, something like collateral is a stranger to their diction or to their language. How are you helping these people, Mr. Chanika? Thank you, Edwin. Edwin, you must understand that Centenary is, an, uh, is a unique bank. Uh, we are a microfinance bank. So we are designed to handle the low end customers. And even when we have become so strong the way we are, like we are a, a strong market player, we have remained true to our mission of providing microfinance to our clients. And that comes with the microfinance approach is that we mo mostly look at our clients' character. How genuine are they? How are they able to pay back? Not mostly about collateral. As you know, we handle even collateral loans, like the youth loans in this country, it's only Centenary which is handling it. And we only take personal guarantors, just people guaranteeing you. And we are lending to our youth up to 5 million with only personal guarantors, women. And you know, these are the most marginalized groups because of collateral. We are able to lend also to women we just using their personal guarantors. So when it comes to land, for example, Centenary Bank, is the first bank to accept unregistered land in form of Chibanja. Eh? Chibanja, uh, just a, a, an agreement from the buyer or a letter from the clan leader confirming that you have a piece of land. That one in Centenary Bank already allow you to access a loan from Centenary Bank. And we don't only stop there. We empower them more to increase, to improve on their collateral, like when we, we support them in registering their land. So depending on the amount you want to get, we can get the, the acceptable collateral, even chattels in Centenary, we accept chattels. We have been lending to motorcycle loans using only the motorcycle, which they are buying as collateral. And in terms of buying land, the land you buy, like under cent land, becomes the collateral for the loan you want to, 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 to get. So collateral has never been a problem. We just allow you, as long as you have the repayment capacity, if you have a good source of income to pay, either you a salary earner or you are in business, collateral is never a problem. We will always see how you can get the money. So collateral has never been a problem to us, Edwin. Thank you. Now to our panelists, uh, let me switch now to the key points that I picked from all your presentations. We are in the last 20 minutes of our uh, discussion today. For those of you that are watching us and are part of the participants and delegates, please kindly, uh, you can share your questions with us uh, uh, through the uh, provided platforms by the organizers, uh, Centenary Bank, and we'll be able to get your questions to the panelists. I picked among the very key things here, seven key things that if you're out there following the conversation is being reduced to these particular seven things. Number one, the low income capacity, access to credit, land tenure system, high cost of building, 
low employment capacity of the economy, uh, the national housing policy, and finally, the question on sustainability. Now, to all the panelists, I'm going to engage you on all these particular seven areas. And we shall start with the low income capacity. I start straight away with Centenary Bank because, again, here you are the uh, money uh, chest and you, you have everything to do with the finances. You've elaborately showed us your reach. I repeat, 74 branches, 181 ATMs, a quarter of our population of close to 40 million or 42 million people, that's 1.9 million people. But we have a problem of low income capacity. What is Centenary Bank doing practically and directly to engage communities so that their income is improved apart from just storing the little money that comes in? I'll send this now to Centenary Bank first. Mr. Abdul, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, there are so many ways Centenary Bank is doing to help our <coughs> clients uh, 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 access financing, even with their low incomes, by quite the products we, we talked about, but also affordability. If you go in the market uh, in microfinance, Centenary Bank is the cheapest in the market. The way we, we calculate our interest uh, uh, at reducing principal balance, you find this is rare in most microfinance institutions. But also partnering with, for example, government, like the loans for use, which we talk about here, they are at 10 percent, 10 to 11 percent. And we have supported youth who are in motorcycle riding to get motorcycles. Others are now even acquiring land through our youth loans. So you could see that we have become still the affordable bank by partnering with government and other institutions. Like, for example, the power connection loan, the electricity loans we are giving, they are at 15%. When I say 15%, that means per annum, not even per month. So it comes like we have tried to be as cheap as possible. Uh, for example, people in the villages, we are the people who lend to smallholder farmers. If you can see in most banks, if a farmer walks into there and wants a loan, they say he can't pay. But in Centenary Bank, we are able to identify these people and then assess them. What we can do with people with low income earners is to ex know exactly how much do you earn. So we give you a loan which fits into your income. That's the best way to empower people. People don't need grants. People don't want free money. They want you to help them in whatever they do to increase investment in their business and grow with you. Most of our clients now in SME started a little in microfinance. So we are able to identify them and, and, and give them the right products and in an affordable way. But we are also doing financial literacy. We train our clients, those like the Boda Boda people, people in the market, even the corporate clients. We do training, what we call financial literacy, to enable them know how to use money and how to repay back our loans. So we are doing quite a number of activities. We are also partnering, like one time we partner with the International Labor Organization to train youth. So most of the people, we, we do it directly and sometimes indirectly with our partners. So that is what we are doing. And also reaching out where they are. If you look at most of our branches, they are in rural areas. And that's where the most people blow, you know, 80% of our people are in farming and 80% are in rural areas, and that's where mostly poverty is. So if you go to most of the rural areas, you will find centenary bank branches, and most of them are banking the local people. So that's what we are doing, to be available, to be there with the right products, to get the right partners, do financial literacy. So that is the kind of interventions centenary is putting in place. And that's why we have that quite, quite a number of large clientele in this country. Edwin, briefly, that's what I can share with you at the moment. Thank you very much. Moses, Habitant for Humanity, given the scenario, um, the low income capacity we're talking about now has been made a little worse by the COVID experience. Whether it's a middle income earner, we have high income earners who have been terribly hit. Of course, for all of you that are watching right now, you know that. Middle income earners. But Moses, my question is, during the COVID time that has become a new normal temporarily, hopefully, what are you doing? 
how effect, I know that you've been affected, but what are you doing to actually avert the effects of the fact that probably the funding is not coming the way you wanted it? What is the capacity available? What more do you think can be done to address especially the issue of the low income earners? Yeah, thank you so much, Evan, for that question. I think uh, still it goes back to uh, adjusting to the new normal. I think we have to let our clients know, our, our population know that, you know, the new normal is come and it's with us and maybe it's going to be with us for quite a while before things really go back, if they ever any anyway, go back to the, to the old normal. So with that in mind, I think for us at Habitat, what we are doing is to en still engage now some of our partners and make these housing, micro housing product propositions more relevant in the new normal. Embed them with now wash products. Wash is uh, actually water, sanitation and hygiene. And make sure that the products which are available at the most convenient outlets of these partners, the banks and other players in the market with, can actually be accessed easily and affordably. And that is the role we are actually playing. We are now get, getting back to some of our partners, especially in the, the financial institutions like Centenary, and saying, Let, let's look at your product propositions, especially though the, the products that target the lower end of the market, and see how best can we argument, how can we augment those products so that Clients can now still walk in and say, I want to fix my toilet and I want to fix it in phases. And then they are able to do the number crunching with the, with the, with the bank officials. And then they come up with something that's within their capacity and then they can go out and do their bits on their home improvements. So that, that's, we think is a more sustainable approach than handouts because uh, we have been doing this especially in our vulnerable group housing program. And it's not sustainable. And now the demand has even been made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we need now to go back to the drawing board and say, well, what are we doing with our partners? And how can we make more relevant products that can be accessed by the general population that is not that well off and can still carry on with their lives? And that's the approach we are taking by engaging our partners by trying to talk to now social investors, because we know ideally the cost of borrowing in our country is very high. And you need to come up with uh, you know, sources of funding that are really socially oriented and not 100% commercially oriented. So that's the kind of approach we are, we are taking to this problem and also making sure that we support other players in the market, those who are innovating. We have partners like uh, Technology for Tomorrow. Those are coming up with uh, appropriate products for the lower end of the market. They can construct a house at less than 30 million shillings, a two small bedroom house below 30 million shillings. And now you can see that there is a segment that is really dying to have that for now and be able to graduate uh, eventually into better housing. But uh, so ideally that, that's the kind of approach we are taking and we are trying to make sure that the, the, the housing value chain is vibrant and it is well coordinated and all the players are speaking to each other. So that overall the expected outcome is to better the housing conditions of the lower end communities and also make sure the, 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 the products or the solutions are sustainable in their own run. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mubi. Uh, to those of you again that are participating in this uh, forum, whether by uh, whichever platform it is, thank you for being a part of this. And uh, special thanks, of course, to Centenary Bank, Habitat for uh, Humanity, Uganda, and uh, Universal Multipurpose. Uh, Mr. Mufadal, we have the high cost of building. Now, of course, when you go to low income capacity and then you bring in a high cost of building, Back to the question of sustainability, what what are you doing to ensure that uh, uh, the cost of building 
stays sustainably. I, I don't want to use the word law because I don't know how you're able, I don't know whether there's such a thing as law uh, making the cost of building really low. I, I run a construction company. I am, uh, I, I know that more, uh, Mr. I think Ms. Abdul was done asking a question. Yes, somehow I, I, I was able by God's grace to be able to put up my own home and I would understand the cost of building is terribly high. But Mr. Mukada, what can, what is Universal doing? What can Ugandans do when it comes to the high cost of building? What is the solution in terms of sustainability when it comes to this area? Um, first of all, what I feel is that this, uh, the word sustainability starts from the from the time and the uh, and the process of planning, Edwin, uh, people have to plan in advance. That what do they want to do? How do they want to do it? Uh, because most of the sustainability is lost when people are just not planning what they want to do. Uh, what is Universal doing for uh, uh, reducing the cost of construction so that we can make it even more affordable? Uh, I had mentioned in my presentation, we are trying to do two things. First is that we are trying to make it, we are trying to do backward integration. By backward integration is that, as I said, that we have our own, uh, uh, our own concrete batching plants, which is again affordable. We supply to the local Ugandans, we supply to other construction companies, real estate companies. And in that, we are trying to maintain quality at a certain price. Where a client, where a person who is making a small house also can come and say that I just want, I just want a little bit of concrete for my project. That is also what we are ready to provide to the clientele. And in our costing, reducing our cost. And one another thing which we are doing is that we are doing forward integration. What do, I, what do I mean by forward integration over here is that we have, we have set up a property management company which helps people to keep the value of their product or their house or their real estate or their building at what it should be by maintaining it, doing proper maintenance. By, it, is just like, it is just like maintaining a car. You have to constantly do oil change. You have to do regulator checkup, you have to do fuel checkup, you have to do, you have to maintain the car so that it runs for you for a longer period of time. The same way we need to maintain the real estate, which a lot of people don't do. That is why we have done this forward integration and also backward integration where we are trying to help and process, uh, help and reduce our manufacturing cost you know, by ready mix, by in-house manufacturing of blocks, by in-house manufacturing of um, doors and forward integration by, by, by maintaining the property, not only for universal multipurpose, but also for other clientele to make their value of the product the same, which in turn keeps it sustainable for a longer period of time. I hope I've made my, my point clear. Yeah. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our participants and panelists, we have under 10 minutes to close our discussion. Uh, we request the panelists in the next three, four minutes to prepare their parting shots, to pre uh, prepare their actual way forward uh, in as far as uh, finance, uh, financing of real estate in the new normal is concerned. But for now, there is a big issue, of course, at hand. For every economy, the national housing policy comes in, pla in place. So uh, I'll start off with uh, Moses. By your experience, you feel like the government has done enough, is doing enough, or what else can it do? In as far as our national housing policy is concerned, uh, in answering the question of access to housing, what do you think the government needs to do? What should the national housing policy be covering at such a time? Please, Moses. Thank you so much, Edwin. I think we all have to realize that uh, uh, the best the government can do for us is just to create an enabling environment. I, I don't expect the government to be pumping lots of money in this sector. 
and uh, I don't see that happening even in the new normal. So we, we just have to take advantage of the enabling environment and make sure that you know people can own land and it's not grabbed away from them. People can walk into these financial institutions, the likes of Centenary Bank, and be able to pick from the menu, the extensive menu they have, and then go do their home improvements and home in construction and home construction. So, uh, uh, in terms of real support from the government in this sector, and uh, particularly in this environment of COVID-19, uh, I, I really, honestly. I, I don't see so much uh, big investment coming from the government into this space. Thank you so much. What do you think? Where should the government be? How should the government be positioning itself for the people? Because at the end of the day, uh, for any economy, uh, taxes are being collected. They are going to the government and uh, the citizens are many times looking. Yes, Centenary Bank is there, but are the policies in place? Uh, where is the input? So uh, I need to hear Mr. Abdul's take on this, please. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Edwin, for this very important question. As you know very well, the government directs investment. And uh, like my colleague said, a very conducive environment for investment is key. But exactly what do we want to see the government doing? Uh, uh, first, uh, the social infrastructure, we must have roads and, and utility investment, uh, power. People always want to live where the infrastructure is. And because some of this is limited, you find people trying to overcrowd in urban areas because that's where these facilities are. So by the government uh, uh, putting that such infrastructure, you find people can spread out and even the cost of construction will come down because people can construct, construct in areas away from the city center and that will bring uh, the prices of the apartments and other houses low. So if the government invests in infrastructure, even the developers can be develop, can go outside the city because people can stay anywhere. So that is key and sometimes raises the cost of, of, of housing. Then uh, the financing. Most of the microfinance institutions who are investing maybe 20% of their money into housing for the low income earners, they don't have access to low cost funds, long term and low cost. And this is in the government policy that they should look for funds, low cost funds to be put in, 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 in the financial institutions to, to own land. Like you, are, you see we are doing under youth. Yeah, we are able to lend to youth because we are working with the government and we can give loans as low as 10, 11 percent. So this also government can do because they can get these funds, long term funds and cheap funds. Other people who can help us is the National Security Fund, National Social Security Fund. They have a lot of money and for workers who are staying in substandard houses. I'm not trying to say that my colleagues are not doing a good job, but I'm saying that we can do better. Why do we wait people to give people money when they are on their deathbed? You know very much if people stay in bad houses, they are prone to a pandemic like COVID, you see. You need good sanitation. You need good aeration. You need social distancing. How can you do that with a, a poor house? So people like National Social Security Fund can help us to invest in this segment by giving us cheaper funds. And also taxes. The government is, it, it can reduce taxes on construction materials or any other technology, which is for low cost housing. So the government can really do a lot in this sector. They can provide housing for their civil servants. For example, the teachers. Most of the teachers don't have where to stay. You find you go to a school and teachers are also staying. Stay. If you go to slums, you'll find that most of the teachers are staying in slums because those are the affordable areas where they can stay according to their level of income. But if they can partner with us, and we put up houses for teachers near their schools, it can be cheaper. So there's a lot we can do, Edwin. We cannot say government cannot do, it can do much in this segment. Maybe my colleagues can add on. Thank you, Edwin. Because we all know uh, that uh, we have achieved the private world of 
Mr. Mufadal. Yes. Your voice volume had gone, please. Sorry? I couldn't hear the question. Can you please repeat? And as far as national housing policy is concerned, do you think there's anything more the government can do, especially as we talk about the new normal with real estate? Is there anything more the government can do? Uh, Edwin, thank you for the question. Uh, I believe what Mr. Abdul is saying is, uh, is uh, very partly right. Um, for uh, real estate and sustainability, as my point has been, it is from the start with the planning. The government has to plan the whole estate, the whole country, the whole, the whole areas in a way that, as uh, Mr. Abdul very rightly said, that there is sanitation, there is aeration, there is ventilation, how many floors a project can be, how many, which area is the green area, which area is for the playground, which area is for the concrete jungle. Everything has to be done by the, by the strong heads, by the strong planning committee of the government, which will in turn help each and every individual and developers like us and banks like Centenary Bank for having a long-term sustainable housing. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have just two minutes uh, to wrap up this conversation. Now, Mr. Chanik, uh, I'll start with Mr. Moses Simogirde from uh, Act for Uganda, uh, for Humanity in Uganda. What are your parting shots? Parting remarks to anybody watching right now in Uganda and in the diaspora. We have a new normal. We're talking about real estate financing. What is that take home that you can give us in about 40 seconds and our minute? Please, Mr. Simon Giridi. Thank you so much, Edwin. Yeah. Thank you so much, Edwin. I think my last comment is about you know working together where the housing value chain is quite a long one and every player in the housing value chain is as good as the other so we need to work more closely together and make sure that we harness the resources along those along the housing value chain and make sure that whatever we are doing we can be able to come out with viable solutions sustainable solutions that we can take out there into the target populations which they can access affordably and then be able to do uh, part of their housing as you know, we wait on the government to, to, to do whatever they are supposed to do and support you know, this low end of the market. But I think it is doable, like my colleague Abdul is emphasized. We have all these guys with tons and tons of money and we need just to have approaches and the uh, strategies that can actually help out to to unleash the power of these institutions that are seated on money that could actually be invested into this segment and make living better for every Ugandan. Thank you so much, Ebe. Thank you very much, Mr. Mufatla. What are your parting thoughts from uh, uh, Universal? What more should we expect from you during this time? Mr. Mufada, please. Uh, uh, working together, as Mr. Moses said, that it is very important that uh, very critical parts like Centenary Bank, Mr. Moses, and especially you, Edwin, creating awareness about affordable housing, about uh, the sustainability or about, uh, about making a product available to the clientele and they, under, they know what is available in the market to buy from. And from Universal, we are, <clears throat> we are just in the, you can say in a, in a in an in a automobile uh, uh, perspective is that we are just in the first year. We want to gear up a little more, not then again a little more, then again a little more. We have uh, huge expectations from this market. We, we want to invest more. We want, to, we want clientele to understand the product even more and get, give them something more according to their taste. And we are planning to, we are planning to uh, give the clientele approximately another thousand units in the next year. So the market is very buoyant. The, the, the client is very educated and now more understanding, but 
Edwin, you will have to continue doing your job, keeping them, keeping people like us, Centenary Bank on our toes so that we give what is actually needed by the market and constantly, constantly working together to achieve best for the clientele. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, finally, Mr. Chanika Abdul uh, Bambi from uh, Centenary Bank. 2020 is being wrapped up. We're going into 2021. Where is the roadmap? In a nutshell, what are your parting thoughts? Yeah, thank you, Edwin. And thank you for giving us an opportunity as Centenary Bank to talk to our clientele and to the world at, at large. Uh, I'm just saying that the real estate industry or the housing industry is a very big industry and it can act as a, 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 an energizer to the whole economy, as you remember in your opening remarks. This is, we should say, a trillion, a, a trillion sector. That means a lot of money can be pumped there and it is sustainable. So we request that uh, uh, we give it the attention it deserves, the government and the private sector. And for us in the private sector, especially in Centenary Bank, we are willing to work with anybody in the housing value chain to make a housing affordable. We know when we work together, we we'll bring down the cost of housing to all our clients and also using technology like we have, you've heard about tech, uh, technology for tomorrow where they're using interlocking soil stabilized bricks, which can bring like a, a two bedrooms up like 30 million. That is quite great. So through partnerships and through organized interventions, we can bring financing law. As Centenary Bank, we ask our clients, please bank with us. If you want to improve your life, bank with Centenary Bank, come to Centenary Bank through our products, go to our branches and our agents and our phone banking to access our services. Edwin, thank you for the job you're doing. And as Centenary Bank, we, we, we expect to work with you more to increase awareness about our products for housing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To all our patrons that have been watching, delegates, participants, the job of ensuring that we have good real estate financing in the new normal, a sustainable housing sector is not only for Centenary Bank or Universal uh, Multipurpose or just Habitant for Humanity, Uganda, or the government, whichever. It takes you and I to have a better housing sector in Uganda. We all need to play a part. For all of you that have been part of this, please remember you can still watch this conversation on the Centenary Bank Facebook page for a repeat. We will try to share the same link on the Property Shop official page for you to pick more uh, highlights on all this. And remember the discussion uh, that is organized, of course, by Centenary Bank, proudly partnering with uh, uh, Universal Multipurpose Uganda and Habitat for Humanity Uganda is part of Centenary Bank's Thoughts Leadership Forum program aimed at reaffirming the brand's contribution and experience in a number of areas, including microfinance, agrifinance, and SME finance. But today, the focus was on real estate. And I believe that the conversation we've had is highly stimulating and it should be carried on to ensure that we have a much better sector uh, for our real estate industry. Uh, special thanks to our panelists today that have ensured they produced the content, the substance that we needed. Uh, Mr. Mufadal Yelawala, uh, CEO, Universal multi -purpose. Uh, thank you very much for the affordable housing you offer in the market. Mr. Moses Timogeti, Financial Inclusion Specialist, Habitant for Humanity Uganda, thank you so much for the work you. that you continue to do. For the and of course, finally, Mr. Chani Kapdul and Sibambi, uh, Manager Housing and Salary Business Centenary Bank. I never knew until this forum how big Centenary Bank is and how far reaching your services have been. Thank you so much. And to everybody, thank you so much. You can go back and repeat watch this again over and over again let's continue sharing this narrative the idea the ideals of how we can have a great uh real estate industry and to everybody else thank you so much edwin mostime uh is my name i've been your moderator today and i look forward to be giving you more you can watch me every sunday on the property show on ntv and of course uh, let's continue building a better industry uh, that's the housing industry for our country thank you god bless you thank you Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you.